Good morning, everybody. I am Jack Long, the Mad Scientist, and today we're going to be discussing how to control the overhang or the projection of your edge banding off the front and the tail of your part, the parameter adjustments that go with it. So if you have trouble with the edge tape where it's routinely uh, not long enough or if it's too long, this is how you would go in and adjust it on a BSE. There's also a couple of mechanical things that we need to confirm first to make sure that mechanics are correct before we go in and adjust the parameters. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump into it. All right, so we're going through and making sure that the side presser of the magazine is correct. There is a number of times when people will complain that the overhang on the front or tail of the part is wrong, and we can go into the computer up in here and modify the parameters to make sure those are correct. But what we want to do is avoid that if we can, because a lot of times the problem is mechanical in here, and it just shows up periodically because, uh, you know, the machines age and as the pneumatics change, you know, just the way it is, it's a machine. So people will start to complain and immediately the first thing they want to do is they want to go up there and they want to monkey around in the parameters up there when their problem is down here. So if you don't fix this problem, the solutions in the parameters is only a temporary fix and then you start adding uh, extra complexity to your problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the air cylinder here. We're going to open this up. And this particular machine has a guide that I can take off and hold in my hand. If I can get it where it's at, get it loose enough. All right, so I set the camera down off to the side so I can extract that because it, uh, it was a little tight in there. This is the back side of the shoe. So what we see as this is in here, this particular machine has a removable shoe. Some do, some don't. Uh, depends on what, what class of machine it is and what options were bought on it, stuff like that. So anyway, what happens in this is if you go in and you look at this face of this, you will see I've got a white roller here. This white roller is supposed to be, oops, sorry, lost you out of the camera. This white roller here is supposed to be proud of this surface. And what that does is when your pin roller jumps in, sorry, let me get this where it's in the camera. Here I am talking and can't even see it. When this pin roller jumps in, it's supposed to push against this. So what happens over time is this, this white roller will get pushed backwards. And as it goes backwards into it, this aluminum face of this becomes proud of your roller and creates resistance. So at that point, what happens is, depending on what your edge product is, Instead of rolling on this nice smooth roller, it's now pushing against this face and it creates resistance. So it creates problems for your front end being routinely correct. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to loosen up this bolt. That bolt is in an oversized hole and you're going to tap it forward and it needs to be proud of this about 0.5 millimeters or so, not very much. If it's too far proud of it and you're running plastic strips, plastic laminate, then what can happen is from this point to your gate, you get this over here, from that roller, which is here, to your gate, which is here, your, your banding, your rims can bow out. And if it's the thin vertical grade, it will catch on this. And vertical grade is hard enough to run the way it is, let alone if, if the machine has got other issues. So if that, if that roller it's too far this way, so the shoe is proud, it will create drag here. If the roller is too far that way, it will create deflection. So you want to have just a little bit in there so that it has enough that when this roller here jumps forward, that it can pinch against your roller. That is most of the problems that I see in that roller adjustment there or when you're doing your end feeds and they're not matching correctly. Now, where that problem comes from, what causes that actual problem is the operator, and it's usually the ones that are fresh operators, the newer ones, is when they go to reload this, 
you need to slide this shoe back forward by hand before you engage the air. Because if you don't, that thing goes slamming forward at full speed. And when it gets to the end of the stroke, if, if there is material there, that roller and that alignment that's in that roller, excuse me, sorry, you're trying to do this one-handed, that roller and its alignment, how proud it is of this, that roller gets shoved back. And when it gets shoved back so far, so many times, eventually, you know, it, it gives way. All right? So, correct this first. Make sure this is correct. And then we go up into the parameters. All right? Okay, so as I said in the intro, you can go out and correct the machine within the parameters. But if you do not go in and confirm the mechanics first and the pneumatics and, and the things that tend to change over time, the situation you get into is that that you go in and correct it with the parameters and then in a short period of time the machine will start doing the same kind of issues now there are times when the parameter adjustment is the correct thing to do but you don't want to immediately jump into that you need to go out and make sure that everything mechanically and electrically and pneumatically is correct before you just assume that it's part of the the parameter problems okay so with that being said let's jump into the parameters all right, so a question that I routinely have is that the stick out on the front of the panel or the tail of the panel is incorrect, and you need to either add or subtract to that value. And the way that VSE does that is they do it inside the parameter list, and inside the edge system here, let me pull this up here, you will see this is an older version, but it's still relevant. Um, it's just different colors and a little bit different design, but it's still all the same. You're going to see a material type, and when you select that, you'll see our four different kinds. So we got a thin tape, a thick tape, a thin strip, and a thick strip. All four of those modes react different for your pin roller, uh, if it has a pin roller. And some of the machines don't have pin rollers. they got the little pullback device. But nonetheless, those four products all have different interactions, and it's based on weight, um, the density of the material, whether or not you're needing to feed the, the material up a little longer. As a for instance, if you're doing your heavy banding, which is number four, when you've got your band and it's coming up and it's pressing in your side roller, it comes in at an angle. And depending on how rigid it is, sometimes it will get some drag back. So as your panel is coming through, it wants to pull. So what they do is they leave that roller, that pin roller, engaged a little longer to give it a little bit of extra push. So as it's making that merge and you're pressing your edge product into your panel, that it helps it marry for just a little bit longer instead of sliding at that beginning. So there's different values for all of these, okay? If you have one that's on the tail, for instance, so you're doing one of your, your coil stocks, the length of your tail is governed by your guillotine. So if we go up to this and we're going to look at our tools, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our password and we're going to log into the parameter area. If you do not have the parameter password or the forcing password, then you need to reach out to BSE and get that from them. Talk with them on the phone because typically we're not going to give you these passwords because if you don't know what you're doing in here, you can screw a lot of stuff up. There are options to ways that we can fix that as us here, uh, independence out in the field. Typically, I would have you email me a parameter file, and I will modify it and then email it back to you, and you reintroduce it. But up here, you're going to see uh, on the synoptics, I've already logged into this. Go out to my parameters, and what you're going to see on the left side when this opens up is it typically comes up, and you'll see axes up here on the top. What you're going to look for, if you come down here far enough, you're going to see insertion point. And sometimes it just says insertion, sometimes it's insertion point. It depends on how old the software is and what version it is, what, what controller it's on. But nonetheless, they're all very similar. And what you're going to see down in this corner here, and sometimes it's, you know, it's in a different spot, but what you're going to see is this black representation here is your panel, and the yellow that's represented here is your edge product. And you're going to see two characters here. It says FW and BW. And that's forward and backward. And that what that is, is that's the front edge of your panel, back edge of your panel. Then you're going to see indications for a negative and a positive. So if I'm referring to the front of my part, then what it's going to do is if I decrease my number, it's going to make it longer. If I uh, 
increase my number, it's going to make it shorter. So if I've got that overhang and I want to make that overhang longer, I move the quota negative. If I want to make that overhang shorter, I'm going to move it positive. Then in addition to that, you will have on the rear, you're going to notice they're in reverse orientation. So if I want the, the tail to be shorter, which is governed by your guillotine, then you're going to move it positive is going to make it shorter and negative is going to make it longer. So what you had to do is you had to identify which side we're going to be working on as to which station that we're going to or, or what parameter we're going to change. Then over in your parameter list, you will have um, a whole series of, of, of um, values here. And the one we're going to want to look for is the delta. It's usually the third or fourth one across. This one, they're calling it delta. And you'll see here values here that increases as it goes through the machine. What that quota represents, if I can get this over here. Sorry if I lose you here for just a second. What that value represents is from your, your in-feed switch that's down here to where the station is located at inside the machine. So if I have a number in there that's about a thousand-ish or so, if I measured from that switch back here to up to whatever it is that I'm moving, that's going to be about, a, a, give or take a little bit, a thousand. When I go up to my side pressers, and I got another quota. When I go up to this one, I got another quota. I go up to this one, I got another, so on, all the way through the machine. Now, I cannot tell you if the action is to turn something on or turn something off because it depends on what the function of that station is going to be. So what I can tell you is that this quota controls a, an action. Sometimes that action is to turn something on, sometimes it's to turn it off. That's beyond what we're going to discuss here. But what we care about is this quota right here, this delta. So I know because I've done enough of these that I know in here that this quota here is about 1,000. That is my pin roller. But you'll look in here, if I can zoom in on it enough, if it's not too fuzzy, I apologize, the, the camera wants to see the, the face of the controller, not the words, so sometimes it's a little fuzzy. I have in here 1,040, 1,040, 1,040, 1,050. And what that value is, is that is when the pin roller jumps in and jumps out. I do not want to change that quota. What I want to do is I want to go over here to the one that says quote. And you'll see on it, it says quote, in, quote, out. So that quota is in relationship to the front of the board. And this quota is in relationship to the front of the board because I'm dealing with that pin roller. If I go over onto this side, you'll see here it says TN roll pin roller and I have one as TK roll pin roller and depending on again which version of software it is they may name them just a little bit different sometimes it would be uh, TP and TR or something anyways it's an acronym it matters something in Italian um, and then right below it you're going to see one that says like uh, thin thin strip or thin something like that and you'll have another one that says thick or, but anyway it's always these four that's right here grouped together they always share this common number and if you go over here you'll see they share this common grouping so on here let's say for instance my thin tape was overhanging um, too much I could go into this quota this number is in millimeters so if I adjusted that quota down and I moved it from negative 10 to negative five, that overhang is going to be five millimeters shorter. Okay, now in a perfect world, this quota should actually represent how much of that overhang is actually there. But as these machines age, then the pneumatics change and there's a lot of little variables in it. So these quotas here no longer actually represent a true quote unquote measurement. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna make an adjustment to that, whatever that is. Before you make that adjustment, we need to make a backup of your parameters. All right, so we go down here to save on file, down here, and I'm gonna go out and I'm going to create a date, represents today, and I already have that in because I've been making a few of these videos, and then you hit save. And what that does is that creates a backup of where we are at today, so if we make a mistake, we can always come back. 
And when you look at this, you can see in here that I've got quite a bit of these backups. I've got a bunch that's in here. So every time that I'm out servicing this machine, I make a backup because uh, I, I do enough caretaking of this machine that I like to keep a history of it. All right, so what we're going to do is we create that backup so that we can come back from it. The other thing that saving it on file does is it creates a boot file so that we make modifications to this and we shut the machine down and we come back that it reboots to this screen. That function, um, according to the what I've gathered from BSE, is it changed over the years. And rather than me trying to tell you that this version of software does it this way, this does it this way, if you follow these steps, it will work on all of them, whether or not it's wasted steps. Okay, um, it's easier than trying to figure out which version you have. So in here we go in and we make a modification of this. And then when I hit uh, enter on that, I change that modification, I go to download. You'll see that it does this blinky blinky things down here exits out of that then we go to upload and the download takes the numbers from here sends it out to the machine the upload takes those numbers brings it back into the supervisor that's the way I understand it it thinks um, and at that point we start the machine up run the recipe and test it and see if it's given us the correct value that we want all right once that we have done that we go back out to our parameter page we repeat those processes until that overhang is the way we want it to be. If I want to do my guillotine, for instance, so the tail is short or too long, then what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and you'll see on this particular one, they're calling it a cutter. But if you notice, it's got the same delta number, which is because it's in the same physical area of the machine. But you'll see it's in here, it says cutter, and sometimes it says shear. There's a, a few different names that they use for it. And then you're going to go over and say same thing. You got a quota and you're going to change that quota. Okay. Now, once you change that quota, you're going to do the same thing as you're going to do a download to send it to the machine. You're going to do an upload to exit out of this page, make your modifications and off you go. When you confirm that this is all done and you're happy with the performance of the machine, then you're going to go down here to save the file and you're going to go back out and create a... Uh, a backup from it again and what you will see in this is if you can see up in here I got one that says today's date do not use that was I was out playing with the parameters doing an example like this so I would do my saving to the do not use the one that is the correct version I go back out to today's date and say save that writes it to the boot file last thing I do my upload so I while it was booting I go to my download save it Upload brings me this machine or back to my Sentra and Once you do that the very last thing we do before we walk away. We shut down the machine hundred percent Start the machine back up make sure anything that we changed has been memorized because more than once we get interrupted And we want to make sure our processes are followed through Okay, that's all there is to it now one of the things that I can't stress enough on this is that when you're in here and you're going to be doing any of these adjustments for your, your uh, front and tail of your material, and you're going to go in and make an adjustments to these, is you have to make sure the machine is correct first. Okay? So I've got a video out there for that side presser bar and all that. Um, so you got to make sure that that is correct first because if the mechanics aren't correct and you correct it inside the parameters, you haven't fixed the problem, you've just changed it and you've added to your problem. All right. Okay, so that's how you make those adjustments in the parameters and how to recover from the parameters if you need to. And as always, guys, when you're making these adjustments, write everything down so you know exactly what you've done because if, if, if you are in this level of the machine, chances are you're going to get interrupted and you want to make sure that you've got everything documented so that if you have to make an adjustment backwards and undo something you've done that you've got documented notes for it i can't stress that enough okay so as always be safe out there guys like share subscribe comment and as we always say let's go make a million